Representatives for both the state and defense convened in Raleigh County Circuit Court on Monday morning for a pre-trial hearing as part of ongoing court procedures for Natalie Cochran. Cochran, who was previously convicted of fraud, has been at the epicenter of a highly publicized legal battle, having been accused of first-degree murder with regard to the death of her husband, Michael Cochran. The defendant has pled not guilty to the offense. Not guilty, Your Honor. A not guilty plea will be entered in this matter. Raleigh County Circuit Court Judge Kirkpatrick oversaw pretrial proceedings on Monday, during which Cochran's defense attorneys argued that the state had not provided them with evidence, documentation, and information pertinent to the case. Representing the state of West Virginia, Raleigh County Prosecutor Ben Hatfield characterized himself as a truth seeker, stating that the defense should be entitled to whatever evidence they may need, but that it was not the responsibility of the state to go fetch it for them. The defense additionally expressed a need for medical records for Michael Cochran, dating back 12 years, implying that perhaps his untimely passing may have been the result of certain actions or inactions taken on his part. Notably, the defense asserted that Natalie Cochran would be unable to receive a fair trial in Raleigh County due to preconceived notions amongst members of the community throughout the area with regard to the case and, as such, requested a change in venue in an attempt to have court procedures moved to a different county. Since I've been involved in this case, when you're mentioning Natalie Cochran, people seem to know about it. Just a couple of days ago, I was talking to a friend and mentioned Natalie Cochran's name. And he said, oh yeah, how much time is she getting for killing her husband? She's already been convicted. Uh, you know, there's just no possibility of a fair trial in this county. Hatfield countered that nothing had yet occurred to that point to indicate that Cochran would be unable to receive a fair trial, expressing the hope that Judge Kirkpatrick would approach the trial just as he has others throughout his career. Extremely premature. Uh, we're not to the point where we know that. The only thing we have is a case that perhaps has been on social media. I don't see any reason to deviate from the same change of venue procedure that your honor has went through your entire career, which is to attempt to pick a jury. And if the jury um, seems prejudiced based on their answers under oath to the court, uh, the court can take the necessary uh, actions under uh, Rule 21. Ultimately, it was concluded by Judge Kirkpatrick that there is nothing at this juncture indicating that Cochran would be unable to undergo a fair trial proceeding. Cochran herself, while initially expected to appear via video, was conferenced in by telephone due to unanticipated technical issues. The state will continue to work with the defense in the consolidation of evidence as all parties approach trial.